Welcome back to another edition of Rudy's Rant, part of Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Chaumont. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go subscribe and hit the bell. We appreciate all of you. Also, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Come On Now Podcast and X at Come On Now Pod. Let's jump right in. ESPN's Monica McNutt really enjoys fame for the wrong reasons, i.e. she says a lot of dumbass stuff. She made herself famous on first take, taking on Stephen A. Smith on the fact that WNBA is a big sack of rotten potatoes. She parlayed that into an appearance on The Daily Show where she admitted publicly she doesn't like Caitlin Clark. She did. If you don't believe it, go watch my video on it linked in the description below. Now she gets on Get Up and yaks her mouth about how she would give the Rookie of the Year award to the team that has the better record. Huh? And that right now would be the Chicago Sky so she would give the Rookie of the Year to Angel Reese because they are a half game better than the Indiana Fever this season, despite being 1-2 and two against the Indiana Fever this season. Take a look for yourself. My Rookie of the Year is going to go based on the standing okay. because I think that, that is how you have the opportunity to measure impact. And the sky is right above and them. And the sky right now are in the playoffs, so you'd have to give the nod in my mind to Angel Reese. Look, the double-double streak that she's mm -hmm. rocking and rolling, chasing down 12 double-doubles to start uh, is the record that spanned over two seasons. She's already gotten to 11. I think when you sit back and you look at what's around her, head coach Teresa Weatherspoon in her first year, there's not another number one draft pick on that roster currently. There, There's not another all-star on that roster currently from years past. Indiana, they are building blocks. Yeah. Aaliyah Boston, rookie of the year, number one right. pick last year. Obviously, Caitlin Clark this year. Uh, Kelsey Mitchell has had big-time seasons over the course of her career. So there's more there in terms of the supporting cast around Caitlin, but both of them have been incredibly impressive. And I think those odds don't... Since when does record matter for rookie of the year? Bad teams are drafting the top rookies. If you want to be literal, the Sky drafted Reese with a number seven pick. That means they were better than the Indiana Fever last year. They also had the number three pick with Camila Cardoso. Victor Wimbanyamo won Rookie of the Year this year in the NBA. And the San Antonio Spurs won 22 games. They were 22 and 60. They were one of the worst teams in the NBA, even after drafting him. But there's no one on the face of the freaking planet that would have watched Victor Wembanyama play this year and sit here and say he was not the clear-cut rookie of the year. Based on this infinite wisdom, McNutt, who is clearly nuts, or let's just face the reality, she hates Caitlin Clark so damn much that she can't see the forest from the trees. McNutt's entire fame is credited to Caitlin Clark. Period. Nothing else. But based on her infinite wisdom, Chet Holmgren, who finished second in the voting for Rookie of the Year, should have won as his team finished with the second best record in the NBA and was the number one seed in the West. I guess she forgot that, right? Jaime Jaquez, with the Heat, should have finished ahead of Wemby. So should have Brandon Miller and Brandon Pozhezemski from Golden State. I can't pronounce his name, sorry. All of their teams finished far better than the Spurs did. But they weren't the Rookie of the Year in the NBA. Yet, that's the logic that Monica McNutt will give you that the team with the better record should win Rookie of the Year. I, 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 I'm at a loss. The Indiana Fever and Chicago Sky are half game apart, and Caitlin Clark is a top uh, in the top 20 in every major category in the league. Angel Reese is sporting her double-double streak of catching a lot of her own missed shots from three feet away from the rim, which allows her to lead the league in rebounding because she averages nearly five offensive boards a game. 
Half of those are misses to herself. You don't believe me? Go watch them play. I've watched it all season. There's videos that have been made of this. Just toss the ball at the rim and catch it right back. And you get credited for a rebound. Let's be real. We know what it is. This double-double streak, it's great. Yeah, some of it's legit. Some of it's padded. The Chicago Sky was just a better team than Indiana last year. So Reese joined a better team, as I said, than Clark. Reese isn't even the best player on her team. If you've been watching, their best player is Kennedy Carter. Reese also has a mountain next to her and Camila Cardoso. So while she plays with great effort, and I give her all the credit in the world for that effort, don't think that that mountain next to her in Cardoso doesn't make a difference, especially in her rebounding. Because early on, she was grabbing rebounds. Now she's grabbing a lot more rebounds because Cardoso takes up so, takes up so much space. And it frees Reese up to grab more rebounds than she was grabbing literally a month ago. These are facts. Reese has gotten better, but this isn't a race. This is a wipeout. Caitlin Clark has changed the WNBA herself. No one else. The WNBA All-Star leader in votes in 2023 got 95,000 total votes. Clark got over 700,000 to lead all fan voters this year. And the turnout for voting for the WNBA All-Star game was 700% higher this year than last year. That's the Caitlin Clark effect. The Indiana Fever have the top 20 attendance marks of the season. They just broke a record at the T-Mobile with the Las Vegas Aces for the largest rec crowd on hand since I think it was 1997. Not to mention all the Clark's all of all of Clark's games draw massive TV viewership. They average 105% more fans than the rest of the league. Over 15,000 fans to 7,000 fans for games that she's not in. Oh yeah. And Clayton Clark is balling while being double teamed 70 feet down the court. Teams are so petrified of her. They're designing their game plans around getting the ball out of her hands. How do I know that? Lexi Brown, who's on Gills Arena, who played her twice and plays for the Los Angeles Sparks, said that exact same thing on Gills Arena just the other day. And in fact said, Caitlin Clark is the rookie of the year while trying to sugarcoat that it's close, which we know it's not. The game plan is taking the ball out of Caitlin Clark's hands. No one is game planning Angel Reese 25 feet from the rim. Nobody. Heck, 75 feet from the rim. Caitlin Clark has defenses that are so messed up that, will, that they will forget that they have one more free throw, which happened this year when a girl for the Sparks made a free throw and then jumped on Clark so fast because she, because she wanted to make sure that she guarded her, even though she still had one more free throw to shoot. She has these defenses so messed up that they will gladly give up layers to Aaliyah Boston. Virtually, virtually every possession by double-teaming Clark, hoping that Clark's passes will either be dropped or the wide-open layup will be missed, which will happen a lot, which has happened a lot this season. Clark is the best guard in the WNBA. It's not even a debatable topic when you consider that no other guard is being defended and game-planned the way she is. And it's because Clark has no secondary guard she can rely on to help take the pressure off of her or a coach to help create space for her. Clark turned two offensive power, offensively powerful guards in Camila Copper and Jackie Young into bricklayers the last two games because they were so exhausted from chasing her around the court to the tune of 8 for 31 from the field over two games. Coop, Copper went 3 for 15 Jackie Young, who's like a 48% shooter, was 5 for 16. Two elite scoring guards were burnt out from guarding Clark all over the floor. They would rather give up their offense than let Clark hit him for 30 or 40. But let's look at this lunacy of McNutt. Last year, who won the MVP? Brianna Stewart. Who was the best team in the league? It wasn't the New York Liberty. It was the Las Vegas Aces. By that logic, anyone that was not named Asia Wilson had no business winning MVP. 
Who was the rookie of the year last year? It was Aaliyah Boston. The Indiana Fever sucked. They were 10th in the league. Based on McNutt's logic, she shouldn't have won it because there were other females that played for the Minnesota Lynx and the Atlanta Dream who both had better records despite not having as good a numbers as Aaliyah Boston. The fact that she thinks this is actually a close race is laughable. It shows such an utter disdain for Clark and ignoring the literal intricacies of basketball that someone in her position should clearly understand and notice. She should notice how teams are game planning Clark. She should notice that Indiana coach Christy Sides is the worst coach in the fucking history of the league and is single-handedly suffocating Clark offensively, preventing her from shooting. Heck, Sides has said it. She should notice that Clark is dropping dimes left and right and should be averaging 10 assists a game if her teammates could make wide open layups and or catch the fucking ball. From her perfect passes down the floor, she should notice that no offense is being run for Clark and that she is basically having to create most of her looks. She should notice that Angel Reese's rebounding numbers are completely padded by her own missed shots. I'm not taking anything away from Angel Reese. She's still grabbing lots of rebounds. But there's some fluffery to that shit. She should notice that the six foot three Reese is shooting under 40% from three feet from the rim, although she's getting better. She's still shooting in that four, under 40% or just that 40% clip. And notice that Clark is shooting 40%, primarily shooting jump shots. And Clark, around the basket, shoots almost 50%. McNutt wants attention. She loved the attention from The Daily Show. Notice she did it on Get Up when no one else was on the show other than Brian Custer, who was going to nod and smile as he did. No one else to combat that garbage take she made. Based on that asinine logic, then McNutt had Caitlin Clark as the rookie of the year a week ago because Indiana was ahead of Chicago on Monday. So based, based on her comments, now she's basically going to flip-flop back and forth on rookie of the year for the duration of the season. But we know that's not true. We know the truth. We know McNobody was waiting for this date to make this statement so that she could say, it's Angel Reese. Why didn't she make this same statement on Monday of this week when Indiana was ahead of Chicago? <clears throat> That's right. It wasn't Angel Reese, so it didn't work on that day. She then even says that Chicago doesn't have any first-round picks on the roster. What is she talking about? They have nine first-round picks. They have three second-round picks. No talent? Kennedy Carter would be the second best player on the end of Fever, the Indiana Fever right now. Christy Wallace from the Fever wouldn't make the Chicago Sky roster. The Fever have eight first round picks, one second round pick, two third round picks, and one undrafted player on their roster who happens to be Erica Wheeler who gets major minutes. So what the freaking hell is she talking about? Is she saying that they didn't have carryover talent? Gives a crap. If you traded Teresa Weatherspoon for Christy Sides this moment, the Indiana Fever would be, would be winning more because Teresa Weatherspoon is far better a coach than Christy Sides. It's not even a conversation. The Sky even cut, even cut a first-round pick last week. McNutt is so upset that the Lily White girl has the nation's attention. And she takes, makes these outlandish takes on Clark when, again, she should be thanking her. Thanking Clark for making her relevant. You don't like the white girl? Just say it, man. There's nothing that Angel Reese has done on the court, forget about off the court, that would make anyone with any sense say that she is the rookie of the year over Caitlin Clark. It's not even debatable unless you just have a problem with a white girl being better at basketball than the black chick. And that same white girl garnering all the attention because lo and behold, she's freaking really damn good and exciting to watch. She's made millions of people turn on the television to watch her. You don't like it? Boo fucking hoo hoo. So what are your thoughts? Do you agree with McNutt? Do you think Angel Reese is rookie of the year? Or do you think she just continues to her Venom trail of Caitlin Clark because she just doesn't like her? Let us know in the comments. Come on now.
Thank you.